back again guys from the Smoky Mountains. Got a beautiful day out. Had some rain overnight, 62 degrees starting out this morning. Should be getting pretty warm though. And we're doing a pretty long route today. We're getting a late start like we did yesterday. It's quarter to nine. We gotta be back a little early today because I'm gonna be smoking some pork all night. This is our drive out of here. And it's not gonna look as steep because I got the ultra wide lens setting on. But oh my goodness, is this a steep drive. It's fine on the bikes. Just gotta watch the leaves and the wet slickness and the big speed bumps. Beautiful ride out though. So let's see, Pat and I should have both about a third of a tank of gas. The other two guys said they've got about 70 miles of range left. Ooh, that speed bump was slick. Kind of went sideways on the back tire there a little bit. Plus my tires are cold and wet. So we're gonna go riding for a little while this morning. And again, I didn't really look at the route, but I am going to assume it's a whole bunch of more super twisty roads the whole way. <laughs> I'm amazed that uh, he found these routes. I mean, he made them himself, and it turns out he hasn't ridden these roads before. He's zooming in to his GPS display here to see what kind of corners he's coming into. I thought for sure, you know, oh, they'd ridden this four or five times and they know the roads. Nope, first time. <laughs> These guys can ride, it's no joke. Ooh, a little foggy. Nice mist coming through the Smoky Mountains. Imagine that. So I'll pick this up when we get to some better roads, get the tires warmed up, and have some fun. Well, I think we're starting the twisties. We went about 30 miles or so on basically highways up and over a few ridges to get to this new route. Roads are sketchy and if he's gonna ride balls out I'm just gonna drop behind because I have never ridden wet mountain roads to that extreme so I don't have any confidence in it yet. It'll take me some time. This is great. If, if this is the pace this is fun. I'm not scraping pegs, <laughs> but it's still really brisk. This is awesome. These roads are absolutely flawless, freshly repaved. They're just starting to dry out, so give it another hour, they'll be nice and dry. But they are a little wet right now. I don't know if you're going to see it on camera. Man, I'll tell you what, one thing that I can't wait for is YouTube to up their bandwidth limits. Right now all the videos are maximum 8 megabits a second that you guys see on the stream which is horrible for anything like this where there's fast action. Watching the native file on the computer I checked them last night on the laptop just to make sure everything was good. Those are 60 megabits a second which obviously I don't expect to be streamed but something in between there is no pixelation. You see every leaf on every tree in every frame. There's no blurring, nothing. When you have fast action like this, especially with trees, it is a incredible difference. It's like going between a 4K TV and an old black and white. It is that big of a difference. I think I'm gonna start from this trip, at least, holding on to my original video files just in case things improve in the future because I'm not sure if things improve in the future if YouTube will reprocess the original files. I don't know if they do that. They've been working on a new encoding system called H.265 which is the, the upgrade basically to H.264 which is what all MP4s have been using for the last decade 
but H265 is a lot more efficient, meaning they could squeeze in a lot more data and improve what you see on the screen with the current bandwidth. And they've been going to it. I don't know if every video is encoded by default now in it or what, but it's a slow ramp out because people need H.265 players and not all browsers still support it. It's relatively new. So that's something to look forward to. But the thing is, the videos have to be reprocessed on YouTube's side between the two. So I don't know if they're holding on to the original uploads, which look awesome, and then if they would reprocess them later automatically or if I would have to re-upload the file again. So I'm going to hold on to them here. It's not like I don't have the storage space. Because these are really awesome videos. This is going to be my favorite, assuming I don't crash again, <laughs> my favorite trip and my favorite set of videos. These roads are just so fantastic. I am so glad they invited me just for the fact that I now know these roads exist. I mean, I would come back up here in a group or alone or with the wife or whatever just to do these roads, you know? I don't care about the Dragon. That's one little 11 mile strip and here we found hundreds of miles. These roads here, man, they're better than the Dragon because there's no freaking traffic. There's no cop every two miles. The Dragon's still cool, but man, I'll take these any day. Yeah, you have driveways and stuff to look out for, but don't drive total balls to the wall and you're fine. Nope. <laughs> like I said, turns out he hasn't ridden these before either, so he's zoomed in and he's looking just like I would have to. So he warned us, might miss a few turns, no big deal. Alright, I'm going to shut up, enjoy the ride. You guys can enjoy the sights. Forgot to put my suspension in hard mode. Man, I love this ES. So convenient, especially for this kind of stuff. Long turn. <laughs> My transition shield is pretty dark right now. And going in and out of these 
spotty trees, uh, the road kind of disappears for a split second. That's a little unnerving. Oh man, a lot of waves in these corners, bouncing up and down. This particular road is not as good as all the other ones we've been doing. Don't like it. Very nice person, thank you very much. That was awesome. Ah, another spot where I lost the road. Sun was right in my eyes and then boom, shade. Wow, lots of steam coming off the road. Yeah, they're drying up. Going back up a really steep grade here. I wish the GoPros had the little altimeter display like some of the Garmin Vibes do, or at least did. I think they eliminated that feature. That was pretty cool. Really gave you a better sense of going through roads like this. Because on the ultra-wide lens, you don't have any perspective of elevation. It's too wide. And if I narrow it in, it eliminates everything on the sides and you really don't get a sense for the surroundings. But I know it's steep when my ears are popping and I have to use a lower gear than I expect. Now this is a great stretch of road. And for anybody wondering, I do have the pretty bad at times popcorn problem hearing all of them on their SMH 10 units to my 20S. Same thing I have with the wife, because she has the same SMH 10 unit. And Cena does know about it. There's a whole lot of people reporting a problem on the Cena forums. And they're just silent on it, man. They don't even say we're working on it. They know about it. But I think the 10 units are just so old that they want people to buy the 20s or the new 10s. And they just hope that'll fix the problem. <laughs> Cena does not have the best product development, let me tell you what. Still waiting for their helmet to come out. That was shown and supposedly going to be available right after last year's AIM Expo. Nothing. They'll probably have the same display up this year. I'll know in about a month and a half. But it looked promising with the built-in comm system module and the optional noise canceling module, carbon fiber. It looked really cool. I didn't get to try one on. They didn't have one my size to try on. But it was super lightweight, of course, carbon fiber. Not cheap. They wanted it, I think they was starting at 800 suggested, and who knows what it'll be if it actually comes to market. There were a few helmets I saw last year that never came to market this year, at least not yet. Of course, the big elephant in the room was the, uh... oh man, now the name escapes me. The huge scandal, the Kickstarter, GoFundMe, whatever the, the pre-order one was. Oh, the Scully. With the heads-up display, the rear-view camera, and all that kind of stuff. And it turns out the 1,500 or so people that bought in for over $1,000, 100 of them got helmets, and they were all one-offs. And the millions that the company raised all went to 
parties and cars and vacations at Vegas and <laughs> the board of directors finally got wise to everything and the CFO finally came forward and you know said I can't do this anymore I'm tired of lying for the two brothers or whatever that were ahead of it and oh that was just a mess so that helmet's gone <laughs> of course all the investors are screwed because here's the screwed up part it wasn't like they actually invested in the company it was one of these Kickstarter campaigns basically I, I don't remember if it was Kickstarter or another one like Kickstarter but under the rules of how they did it they aren't entitled to refunds. So they can't even pursue damages. It was a at your own risk kind of thing. Gassed up, good to go. We got Marcus and Josh switching bikes for this leg. Marcus is having a bad day. He's got some gear lash issues going on. So he's, uh, Getting a little tired of having to maintain constant pressure on the throttle. His jacket just ripped. His microphone died. <laughs> so hopefully he has a little better time on the R1 right now. So now we're just into some beautiful scenery and rolling hills. We're into Georgia again. Covering quite a bit of distance today so we all just stopped for lunch somewhere in a nice little town in Georgia had some real good food now we're looking for a different route back and I think we've got the route says 93 miles to go hopefully it'll be mostly twisties again and hopefully we can get rid of some of the Sunday traffic I didn't film too much coming here because Frankly, for about three quarters of it, it was stuck behind a couple cars and a couple trucks that were really being assholes. One guy tried to run Josh off the road, would not let him pass. Some people are very considerate around here and some are just deliberately assholes. But it's Sunday and there's a lot of church traffic out. The parking lots are all full and there's just a lot of cars on the road. so. Definitely a lot better riding as far as empty, twisty roads in North Carolina compared to Georgia. Well, let me tell you what. Probably a lot more people, too. But it's still a beautiful day. Lots of bikes out. Everyone's out for their Sunday ride. All the locals. A lot of out-of-state plates. We ran into some fairly big groups. Beautiful place to ride bikes, that's for sure.
be considered a dandy road. Yep. I think that was probably my favorite. It's nice and wide, great surface, flows nicely. Yeah, it's basically brand new. Oh yeah, that's sweet. Now we're into South Carolina. We're going to be clipping this for a little while. Going back up into North Carolina. Beautiful roads, just stunning. I mean, the scenery is one thing, but I mean, road conditions, perfect. Time of year is perfect, temperature. This is the time to go up here, I'll tell you what. Whether they do another trip and I take along or not, I'm coming back up next year at this specific time it is just perfect obviously if I'm alone I'm not going to be staying in that huge awesome house but I'll find something around that area because I am loving everything about this trip well we're still making our way through I think we're still in South Carolina and uh, it's been pretty slow going we've been stuck behind a lot of very slow vehicles and I mean slower than the speed limit, like they're doing 10, 15 under. Just Sunday drivers. A lot of out-of-staters, and then they'll turn into a campground. They just don't know where they're going. So we'll have nice short spurts of great roads. And then five miles of doing 30. <laughs> We're going to stop for gas pretty soon for the other guys. 
and says we've got 40 miles to go back to the house. Got to stop at Walmart again because I forgot to get some vinegar for the pulled pork sauce. And then I'm going to get that on the grill. It's a big gas grill and it is beautiful. It's a one of the six double burner gas grill plus a side thing. And it's huge, double racks, looks brand new, you know, great unit. But it's a bit of a challenge to do some things that I'm used to doing on charcoal on the gas. But I got a nice big old aluminum pan, a whole bunch of smoking wood chips, so I'll figure it out. We'll get that pork done. Got a nine and a half pound uh, butt shoulder, shoulder butt. So that should be real tasty. We're not going to be eating it tonight, but I'll be making it tonight. Should be done about midnight or so, so just in time to crash. We had a late night last night. I introduced the guys to cigars for their first time. Gave them all one, uh, middle of the road, you know, not real strong or anything, but some good body. Unfortunately, I feel bad because Josh got sick. It was too much for them. So I've got some real mild ones that I'll let them try tonight, just as a comparison. Uh, Marcus and Pat seem to enjoy them. And they'll get the hang of it, you know, after their first one. By the end, I mean, it was a big difference between when they started and 45 minutes later when we were done. So, tonight should be better.
Hey, we found another parade. <laughs> Yay, thank you, sir. You are awesome. Something. We're back. <laughs> How's the day, guys? Outstanding. <laughs> Tired yet? No, we got back early today. Yes, we no did. Way. Light, light day. Cause it's pulled pork day. <laughs> what you doing? Cleaning. But I don't claim to be an expert, so. Well, don't look at me. A little bit of prevention goes a long way. I don't know what that funny-looking metal thing is around there. <laughs> I do it the right way. One of those guys. <laughs> so how did the bikes run today? Ran great. Got to try out Josh's for a little bit. What'd you think? Had some fun on it. Definitely a different riding position, which I could get used to. But uh, for the tight stuff, uh, the wide bar stance definitely, I think, is the way to go. Long sleepers, this would work out, I think, better. Well, what about you? Which one do you like? Me? Yeah. I I just like to switch it up because I get super sore on certain areas on that. So I still get sore on the other one, but it's different areas. So it evens out. <laughs> honestly, it's, today was once we switched, it was awesome. Because this morning when we left, I was worried, and I knew this is kind of my last hurrah on that thing. I'm getting rid of it, but. 
I enjoyed his bike. I just I don't think I can have an upright. So you got it for sale, right? Yeah. What area? I'm Milwaukee, I think. And what's your asking? Well, it's 95 right now. I think when I get back, I'll probably bring it down to at least nine. Um, it was just kind of a last minute thing if someone happened to be interested in it, was willing to pay. So I really wanted to bring it down here. Okay. But yeah. I, does, it, does it need anything? Is it good to go? Yeah, it's good to go. So why don't you give everybody some kind of contact info if they're interested? Uh, but all you could do is go to Craigslist Milwaukee. That's, okay. Uh, it's everything's there. Pretty simple. Search for 2012, is it? 10. 2010 R1? Yep. All right, cool. Yep. So if anybody's watching this around the time it comes out and you want a sweet 2010 ready to go R1, that's that a Rossi edition? I don't know. It just had some fancy numbers and stickers on it when I bought it. I figured, <laughs> I figured it was an old MotoGP bike. That's Pat, you said you fast. knew what it was. Rossi replica. What? what? <laughs> Rossi replica? Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. I thought that was a singer. <laughs> and all, all you two-wheel obsession fans that think Brian's just a flatland Florida rider, mm -mm. <laughs> he's getting it on today. Come a long ways in two days. I think so, huh? He went from last in the pack to number two. I don't think he's getting by this guy. <laughs> Not in one piece. <laughs> but it's early. we got days You'll see me in the ditch and then you'll pass me. <laughs> I made it! <laughs> Good day. All right, well, I got some more cooking to do. We're probably going to have some cigars again, right? Uh, Maybe not for, well, I, I'm going to, I'll give you a real mild one. If you feel sick, just toss it. and. You're making me look like a giant wiener. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a little queasy. No, just yeah. a giant cigar. But well, it was your first one. I mean, it happens. I enjoyed the experience. That's all that matters. Yeah, it was worth it. All right. Beer time, food time, relax time. See you guys tomorrow.